In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for ZnCl2 plus KOH. That's zinc chloride plus potassium hydroxide. I can see I have these two hydroxides here, so I'm going to put a 2 in front of the KOH. So the hydroxides are balanced, then I need to put a 2 in front of the KCl. Now I have two Ks, two Ks. I also have two Cls. That balances those, so we balance the molecular equation. Now we need to write the states for each substance. If you've memorized the solubility rules, you know that chlorides, they're going to be soluble. So we can put an AQ after that, aqueous. That means it dissolves in water, it dissociates into its ions, it breaks apart. Potassium hydroxide, that's one to remember. That's a strong base and it's going to be soluble in water. Same thing, so we're going to write AQ because it's going to break apart into its ions. However, most hydroxides, like zinc hydroxide, they are insoluble. The exception is some of the elements in group 1 on the periodic table, like potassium or sodium hydroxide, they're soluble, but most of the hydroxides are insoluble. So that means that this is going to be a solid. It's not going to be dissolved in water, it's just going to be a solid. It'll fall to the bottom of the test tube. In fact, it'll be a precipitate. When these react, will form this zinc hydroxide, and that'll fall to the bottom of the test tube. Here we have a chloride and the group 1 element. That's going to be aqueous. That'll break apart and dissolve. So we have the states. Now we can split the strong electrolytes part into their ions. We call this the complete ionic equation, sometimes called the total ionic equation. So zinc is always 2 plus. That's its ionic charge. And the Cl, the chloride ion, that's always a 1 minus. So we can say zinc 2 plus, and I'll write aqueous at the end. I'm not going to write that at this point. And then Cl minus, but the subscript, that means we have two of those. Potassium's in group 1, 1 plus, and the hydroxide ion, always 1 minus. So I have the potassium ion, and the coefficient here means I have two of them. So 2K plus, this 2 applies to everything, so I also have two hydroxide ions. For the products, we said this is a solid, it's insoluble. So because of that, in net ionic equations, when we have a solid, we don't split this apart into its ions. So we're going to write ZnOH2, because that's going to stay together, it won't split up, plus we have two potassium ions and two chloride ions. So these are the reactants, and these are the products, and this is the total or complete ionic equation. We can now cross out spectator ions. These are on both sides of the equation. Really, they don't change, so we're not interested in them. So I have two chloride ions here in the reactants and two in the products. I can just cross those out. Same for the potassium ion, two here, products to cross those out. And that leaves us with our net ionic equation for ZnCl2 plus KOH. That's our net ionic equation. Let me clean this up a bit and add the states in, and then we'll have the net ionic equation. And this is the net ionic equation for zinc chloride plus potassium hydroxide. You can see that the charge is conserved. We have 2 plus here, and then 2 times the 1 minus, 2 minus. So those cancel out. We have a neutral compound. And we have the same number of atoms on each side of the equation. 1 zinc, we have 2 oxygens here, 2 oxygens here, 2 hydrogens, and 2 hydrogens here. So we've balanced the net ionic equation for zinc chloride plus potassium hydroxide. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.